gas. So what needs to happen in order for us to be energy dominant? Well, a lot of it is infrastructure, and in the Department of Interior revenues, if you go back to 2008, we were about $18 billion a year just in offshore. Last year, we were $2.6 billion. That's a drop of $15.5 billion. In perspective, I'm also the keeper of our nation's national parks. We're about $11.5 billion behind in infrastructure, mm -hmm. and you know, when you drop $15.5 billion a year in revenue, uh, that affects negatively, obviously, your ability to fund infrastructure in our parks. And so everyone loves our nation's parks, certainly I do, and we want to make sure energy is part of that. What does that mean, that by allowing drilling on public lands, that will be a way of funding the national parks and making sure they stay afloat? Is that? Well, it's certainly part of it. You know, when, when you put 94% of our nation's uh, offshore holdings off limits, uh, the signals from the market are in, in the first six months of this year compared to a previous year. Uh, the last year, the Obama administration, about $11.5 billion in onshore, uh, or million dollars. The, this year, leases were $146 million. Mm -hmm. So the market understands that our, some of our public lands, particularly offshore and some onshore uh, BLM lands, are important for making energy more uh, accessible. But look, you know, I'm a former military officer, too. I can tell you, I would rather not see our, our sons and daughters go to war. I've seen it, uh, and certainly not being held hostage by foreign entities for our energy needs is, is a positive. Environmentally, I can guarantee it's better to produce energy here in this country under reasonable regulations than watch it get produced in countries that don't have any regulatory framework, Middle East and Africa, to name a few. Sure. Let's break that down into a couple of different pieces. First of all, um, American security is certainly a huge issue that been, people have been focused on for a very long time. Uh, that's why so many have cheered the increased production that we've seen in both oil and natural gas. But uh, you could talk about how we could eventually become energy independent by doing those things, or you could do something else, which is to export oil and natural gas at a, at a higher pace. Uh, in which case, we're not necessarily producing it for ourselves. I, I know that those numbers that we import have come down pretty significantly, something like 30 percent over the last seven years or so, or come down to 30 percent of what we're importing. But if, if we export more, won't that mean in turn that we are still going to be relying on others to make sure that we can meet our daily needs for energy? Oh, no, just the opposite. But it does take infrastructure to do that. Not only can we be energy independent, but the, the term energy dominance is what the president has, has said, you know, allows us to look at, for instance, Iran. Iran's launching ICBMs. We should be concerned. You, there's two approaches, military or economic. Economic mm -hmm. is energy. Same thing with putting pressure against Russia to subplant liquid natural <coughs> gas in Eastern and Central Europe. So Meaning that we go ability. ahead and export our, our liquid natural gas to those European countries so they can no longer be cut off by the Russians every time they get upset with them? Absolutely. But we need the, the ability to do so. And this is a national decision, but certainly infrastructure, making sure we produce energy uh, wisely, responsibility, uh, responsibly. You know, I'm a Boy Scout. I want to make sure our <laughs> campground is left in the same or better condition you find it as the steward of our public lands. Uh, that's my charter. But certainly you know, having energy production, energy infrastructure, doing it right is part of only, uh, you know, not only the domestic policy, but national policy as well. Secretary Zinke, isn't, isn't it kind of interesting that when all of these things happen, you can release all the regulations and allow more drilling, eventually what's going to settle it are market prices themselves. We've been looking at WTI below $45 a barrel, and uh, just this week we spoke with Harold Hamm from Continental. I know he's been there talking with the White House, too. He says if uh, U.S. drillers spend a lot more on uh, binge drilling, it's going to put us in a big, a tough position because he says below $40 a barrel, it just doesn't make sense financially for them to be drilling. Well, a great point. And the Trump administration does not pick and choose winners. Mm -hmm. So we don't favor any energy source or another, but certainly having energy that's, that's you know, abundant, uh, cost competitive is, cer is certainly a, a part of it. Uh, you know, energy prices have stabilized. Uh, I pay attention to the markets, but that doesn't drive you know, our policy. I think regulations, we need to streamline, simplify, and in some cases strengthen. And when regulations are arbitrary, then it doesn't give the right signals to the market whether they can proceed forward because having a regulation that's arbitrary uh, can put you in somewhat a quagmire if you're sitting on the sidelines 
and want to invest or, or decide not to. Mr. Mr. Secretary, the, um, the impact of energy pricing goes well beyond the industry itself. It obviously goes to the competitiveness of U.S. manufacturing and our ability to uh, offset higher labor uh, rates with much lower energy costs. Absolutely. So uh, I'm fully supportive of drill, drill, drill and all of the above for energy. The question once we've uh, unlocked the ability to export is what happens if prices start to uh, rise again well above 50 or 55 that uh, the, the natural gas market equalizes uh, across the world so that we lose our competitive edge there. Can you see a scenario where we once again clamp down on the amount of exports to keep prices in this country, particularly for natural gas, advantaged? Well, uh, yeah, I'm a former geologist, and I say former because uh, I graduated in 1983 in geology. Uh, but things have changed, as, you know, from, even since 10 years ago. Fracking is a game changer. Uh, as it turns out, not only do we have energy, but we have the most potential energy. And I have, as interior, about 20% of our holdings, all the offshore. Uh, and we have more energy potential than any other region or country. A lot of it has been from fracking. So no, I don't, I don't see it as a, as a disadvantage. I see it building infrastructure and having the ability uh, to export is, is important. I think prices are stabilized, but you are absolutely right that having energy that's reliable, abundant, and cost effective uh, keeps us uh, competitive as far as the manufacturing sector. So I, I, my, the outlook is very, very good. I think we'll have a reasonably low competitive energy if we use our assets wisely. Thank you. Uh, Secretary, there, there have been uh, many questions about the parks that you've been talking about and the monument designations that have been made, and, and two in particular, Bears Ears in Utah and the North Main Woods, those monument designations. Do you, do you plan to keep those monument designations for those areas, or is, is that something that will be let go? Well, yeah, uh, certainly in Bears Ears, my recommendation was made. Uh, Maine, we've, we've looked at. We're pretty comfortable uh, with our, what our recommendation is going to be. And monuments, you know, over time have been an enormous, uh, I think, positive step to keep our treasures, uh, in, uh, you know, as they are. But there are limitations. The Antiquities Act, in particular, pretty short, and I encourage everyone to read it. It's smallest area compatible to protection of the object. And occasionally you do need to look at the executive powers to make sure they're not being abused, to make sure they're appropriate. Uh, the monument review, I look at three things. Does it follow the law? Uh, does the local community, did they have a say? Did they have a voice? And is, is changing the proclamation or changing it in the best interest of the, of the public in our country? Um, I think we're pretty comfortable on, on where we're heading. The recommendation in Bears Ears which was, by the way, all federal land to begin with, had a monument, has a Forest Service a holding in it, uh, has a wilderness area in it. It was all mostly a federal land, and we made a recommendation uh, for Congress uh, to do their part and look at lands within that to see whether they're better suited in, in a different class. But uh, overall, I, I think we, we looked at it very thoughtfully and, and have a very step-by-step very -step approach. Secretary Zinke, I want to thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Have a great day. You too. <clears throat> hey there. Thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.